Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to this video. This is a complete tour of Motorcycle Live 2023. Hopefully this will help you get the most out of the show or if you can't make it, it'll give you a flavor of what you're missing out on. Let's jump straight in. So there are three, well technically four, but there are three main halls at Motorcycle Live. We've got Hall 2 here. Hall 3 is just behind me over there. And technically that's two. It's Hall 3 and Hall 3A, but they're sort of combined. And then there's Hall 4, the other side of it as well. It doesn't matter which way in you go to Motorcycle Live. You can get into all of the halls, walk in between them. It's all one big open U-shaped space. Now, in Hall 2, what you can expect to see in terms of major manufacturers, this includes BMW Motorrad, we've got Royal Enfield, we've also got CCM and Maving. It's also worth checking out the National Motorcycle Museum. They've got quite a good stand, actually. There's some real lovely things on there. There's the EV test ride zone, which as you come into Hall 2, is right to the left hand side as you come in. And also is the machine shop, where you can do welding right here at the show. We're gonna start with BMW Motorrad, and BMW have got a huge presence in Hall 2. And of course, a lot of people are gonna be coming on to the BMW Motorrad stand, and they want, of course, see the new R1300, which is here, as you can see, there's quite a few of them that you can have a sit on. They've also got in the center of their stand a live demonstration zone. Now, if you go down to the Off-Road Skills Center down in Wales, that's the guys that are doing this. And they've actually been jumping the new R1300 across that jump in the center there. Also on the BMW Motorrad stand, you've got the new F800GS, the new F900GS. You've also got the M1000XR and the S1000XR, which are just up over there for you to have a look at. Now, let's carry on in this direction and head over to Royal Enfield. Highlights on the Enfield stand include this, the new Himalayan. And so just round the corner from the Himalayan is this, which is the new Bullet 350. Now, if we head over in this direction, as you head towards the right-hand side, you start heading into Hall 3 and 3A. But before you get there, if you do a left by Sealy, just behind me here at the machine shop, you can have a go at welding. They're doing that live, and you can have a go at welding. Even if you've never welded before, these guys will show, show you how to do it. I had a go myself. Have you done any welding before? No. Never? Never. Soldering? Oh, yeah. Soldering, yes. Welding, no. It's just like posh soldering. Posh soldering. Posh soldering. You'll see immediately if I was starting to form. Yes. It's hard to tell how far away it is. So let that puddle form for a second. Now put it directly in the puddle. You don't want to put it next to it, it's got to be forced into the puddle. That's it. That is the state of my welding. 
Big thanks to the machine shop for giving my first ever welding lesson. If we carry on down past the machine shop, you get to the National Motorcycle Museum, which is based just literally two minutes away from the NEC. They've got some fantastic bikes on their stand, including a 1903 and a 1911. Let's have a look over here. This 1911 Borough, if you look at, look at, the, uh, look at the chain there, it's actually leather riveted together. Look at the brakes. Absolutely lovely. So as you head off the National Motorcycle Museum stand, you start heading into Hall 3, which is just behind me here. Now, technically, the show is across four halls, but Hall 3 and Hall 3A are sort of combined together into one huge space. It doesn't matter where you come in to the motorcycle live show, it's U-shaped and all open. So once you're in, you can literally head around the show to your heart's content. Over here is MV Augusta. Now, we're used to seeing those guys and you've seen them as works of art. Come and look at this. But the thing on MV Augusta stand that really took my eye is this here. And I'm going to try and pronounce this right. This is the LXP Orioli Edizione Limitata. If I've said that wrong, abuse me in the comments. Straight away across from MV Augusta, we've got KTM. It's quite easy to miss KTM in the show guide because it looks like one big stand, all of these put together. But they are next to MV Augusta near the National Motorcycle Museum. And they have got some beautiful machinery on there, including the new 990 Duke. before we carry on in hall three let's just very quickly jump back towards hall two because here is maving and they have got the new rm1s hello chap how are you now i was having a word with these guys earlier and i actually got to talk to the guy who built this bike and he told me all about it we have a seven kilowatts engine that is picking to ten and a half we have upgraded suspension we have a different battery system. Uh, you have a two batteries on board all the time and the door opens that way. You slide the batteries out. You can charge them just like the RM1 or you have the second option where the badge flicks up, open and you can just plug in to your home switch and just connect it like this and charge it like this. Uh, because obviously you have more power, we have upgraded the disc brake as well and that gives you obviously you know, more braking because more speed as well. We have updated color scheme as well. We have different options on the other side of the stands. We have different variations of the tank colors. We do have original tank colors that we had that you can have on top as well. Uh, we did upgrade some cosmetical things as well. But other than this, we try to keep the same beautiful aesthetics as RM1 is. So this is an electric bike. You can literally sit here and look at this. This is coming out next year in 2024. You look across the way and you've got the granddads of them sat just behind there from 1903. Let's carry on round this way because just round here is CCM. Now I'm a bit biased, but I adore CCM. I love the details I go to. Come with me. CCM have got a significant stand here and they've got these beautiful personalization booths where you can start tinkering and changing the look of your bike. 
But for me, one of the highlights is this one over here. It's this Spitfire edition, which is absolutely beautiful. It's got lovely details, including this plaque here and this leather along here. Love CCM, I love the detail of their bikes. Right, let's keep going back into Hall 3. So there's quite a few manufacturers in Hall 3. This includes BSA, KTM, MV Augusta, Ducati, Yamaha, Zero are in here as well, along with Norton, Herald Triumph, Kawasaki, and that all important test ride zone. Now the test ride zone, when you come into Hall 3, it's over in the top right hand corner. It does get very busy, it's first come first serve. So if you're gonna try and get a test ride, either do it as soon as you get here or head there before midday, which is when they open the afternoon slots. Of course, a bike show isn't a bike show without Ducati, and they have got the bright lights of Ducati here, and you know when you're on their stand because it's absolutely stunning. Now, these guys have got multiple UK premiers here, including this, the Desertex Rally, The Hyper Motorrad 698 Mono. Just behind us over here, if you actually go on the stand, is the new Multistrada V4S Grand Tourer. So that's all here on the Ducati stand. Next to Ducati is Yamaha. Now to see all of the new bikes from Yamaha, you have to head quite into the stand, quite into the center space of it. You've got the 700 Explore, but you've also got the other side, the 700 Extreme as well. We should also have on the stand, one's down that way, but there should be another one here, which is the MT-09 SP. But if you come with me, Keep going through the stand, it's the XSR 900 GP. Now from any angle, this doesn't look like a brand new bike. It does look really heritage, especially at the front with that minimalist detail. But it is indeed absolutely brand spanking new. You can see like when you get a bit closer and you see things on the dash and those indicators. Next to Yamaha and near the entrance to Hall 3. So if you come in Hall 3 through the main entrance, probably the first thing you're gonna see is bike shore or Zero motorcycles. Now, it's worth having a quick stop at Zero because they've got the S. There's the Zero DS. Zero DSR and the DSR RSX and DSRSX 
Black Forest edition as well. Try saying that after a long day at motorcycle life. So this is a tour of sort of the major manufacturers and those that have got relatively new stuff or UK premiers on the stands. What we're not doing is looking around any of the many traders that are here. So if you need new bike gear, great place to start. Now with an enormous presence at the show is Triumph and they've got a fair few new bikes on their stand as well. They've got the new Speed 400, they've also got the Scrambler 400 and they are right at the front of the stand as you come to it from the main entrance. In fact, if you come through entrance 3A, they're pretty much right in front of you, just behind Norton. When you go inside the stand, they've got the stealth edition of the Speed Twin 900 and just behind there, These are the new Scramblers. You've got the 1200X, and then behind you over here is the 1200XE as well. You've also got, just tucked away over there, the final edition of the Thruxton. Prime stand is sort of split into different areas, so you can go like from your sort of off-roady heritage type stuff to more your road racer and super sport. Then you've got Kawasaki, and if you stand here looking down by the Kawasaki stand between Triumph and Kawasaki, you can then see into Hall 4, you can see how all of these halls are completely open, you can just walk between them and you don't get a sense that you are really walking between them all. So big news on the Kawasaki stand, there's three main things to have a look at, it's some of their new electric and hybrid bikes, now they've given these a front row seat. Right down here you've got the new electrified bikes including the hybrid. Over here on the Super Sport, this is the Ninja ZX4RR. And then tucked away just behind over there is the new Eliminator 500 as well. Now as you head into Hall 4, if you're coming from Hall 3 into Hall 4, well the first stand you're going to come to is Honda. Now Honda have got something quite interesting over here and that's their new e-clutch system. Now it's still a fully manual gearbox, but they've actually mounted two little motors and they've got a cutaway just there. And those motors activate the clutch for you, even when you set off. And I had a chat with one of the guys here who explained how the system works. You can think of it as a normal mechanical uh, clutch. It will operate in the same way as a normal mechanical clutch. But instead of having to pull the clutch lever, uh, instead we've got two electrical motors that will do that for you. So, um, when you're setting off, it, it will automatically disengage your clutch and then re-engage it. Uh, and after that, you can just go up and down the gears as if you would, as if it like a normal quick shifter bike. So if you've ridden a bike with a quick shift, you can almost think of it the same for, for doing your gear changes. Um, but for your stopping and starting, the clutch will then come in uh, and disengage engage and disengage to ride away um, automatically, if you want it to. Alternatively, you can use the clutch lever uh, and do it manually. Um, in conjunction with the automatic, so you could override it with the lever, or I'm told that on the production models, um, you can override it on the dashboard and turn the system off completely if you don't want it, and just go back to manual. So we've got a cutaway here, and this is the e-clutch system. That's here. right, so we've got two motors uh, that will give you some fine adjustment for a chain of gears, because obviously we want it, there's a lot of torque uh, and finite control, so the two motors between them uh, or do the adjustment. Um, I've not had a chance to ride it myself, but I'm told by uh, somebody who has that 
it pulled away in a very natural way. Um, it wasn't jerky, it wasn't too smooth. It was almost like somebody letting out the clutch and wanting to get on it, almost, you know, quite aggressive. There was, I don't want to say aggressive, there was a bit of a surge, so it felt very natural in the way it took away. Um, but then again, that might be related to throttle position. If you didn't want it to pull like that, I'm sure it wouldn't. Um, and this is coming out first on the CBR. Is it, do you know if this is going to be adopted by others? I would imagine so. I mean, we don't know for sure. Um, but if it's successful and, and, and people enjoy it and, and they see the benefits of it, which I'm sure they will, why wouldn't you? You'd start to introduce it on more models as you go along. Now, also on the Honda stand, we have got, I want to make sure I get all of these, we've got the C, we've got the 1000 Hornet, which is just behind me over there. <laughs> and we have got the bike with the most number of R's out of any bike here. It is the CBR 1000 R, R, R. Bike for pirates, I think. Anyway, let's keep going. Right down near the front of Hall 4 is Indian motorcycles. Quite like Indian, a bit like CCM. I love the detail on them. And one of the key bikes to come and have a look at is this one right here. This is the FTRR Carbon. Have a look at the details on that. Very much centre stage. And then finally, we come to, again, huge presence at the show. It is Suzuki. As you can see, Suzuki have got loads and loads of bikes on their stand. This includes the GSX S1000 GX. We've also got the GSX-8R. And also the V-Storm 800RE. All of those are on the stand here at Suzuki. So hopefully this quick tour and guide around Motorcycle Live 2023 has helped you navigate around to get the most from your time here and your visit to Motorcycle Live 2023. If you can't make it, then hopefully this has given you a bit of a taste as to what you can see and do at the show and you can make it here next year. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, underneath you'll find a thumbs up. If you hit that, that really helps this channel grow and it helps this video reach more people. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button, you'll get a new video from me every week. There's a video link just up here which shows you how you can get on a bike here at Motorcycle Live. There's five separate opportunities for that. Well, until next time, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.